Congresswoman-elect has taken the stage and she's being joined by her team and her family. Let's listen in. from my home county of, of Wyndham County, and I know he's gonna continue to serve his community well. So thank you, Liam, for running. It's important to run. And of course, I have to give so much credit to the best congressional delegation in the whole country, which is the Vermont delegation. I meet a lot of people from across the nation and legislatures from other states and they say, you are so lucky. You've got the giant of the Senate, Patrick Leahy, of course, as we know, unparalleled service to Vermont. We've got Peter Welch, who has been a mentor and a friend to me, who's gonna help me succeed in the House. Yeah, he is. And of course, Bernie Sanders, who's been uh, the conscience of the nation. And I was so, so honored to have his support. It really gave us so much energy in the home stretch. So thank you to all of those men who have served us so well. I can't wait to be a colleague with the senior and junior senator from Vermont. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm, I'm standing here with my family and my team because tonight we reaffirm that Vermont and the nation is still a place where anything is possible. We, we are all still capable of change and promise and progress. And tonight, after 200, and 31 years, Vermonters are sending a woman to Congress. Thank you. So, so thank you to my incredible campaign team for hard work and hustle and commitment and joy, so much joy. I know everybody says this, but it's true, the best campaign team in politics. I thank you. Thank you for your deep commitment to Vermont and to this movement, this movement of so many people here in Vermont. I want to thank also my incredible campaign manager, Natalie Silver. As, as Natalie and I like to say, we're, we're two scrappy little broads. Watch out! <laughs> and I want to just thank most sincerely, my, my close friend and advisor, Julia Barnes. So, Julia Barnes, I thank you for believing in me and for helping me to believe that it was possible for us to do this incredible thing together. Thank you, thank you.
And of course, thank you so much to my family, to my parents, to my siblings, to my extended family, but most of all, to my spouse, Elizabeth, and our two kids, Abe and Sarah, who are with me tonight. We, we always said in our family that running for Congress was really a family project. It's not just about one person. And it really is. It is, is a project. And the three of us have made, three of you, excuse me. Um, there are actually four of us, yes. You can tell it's been a year. I'm a little tired. Um, the three of you have made incredible sacrifices to get me to this place. And being in politics is incredibly lonely at times. It's really lonely. But it's not work that's done alone. It's done in a team. And we are a very tight team in this family. Team Ballant Wall, you are my rock. You are my refuge. I honestly could not be here without you. So thank you. So, I have said over and over on this campaign that this is a time for courage. I know, I know so many of us feel like these are such dark times. And it's so easy to be cynical about politics. But if we, those of us on the stage, if we had believed the conventional wisdom, if we had believed that change was impossible, I would not be standing here tonight. So take note and take heart. Vermont is a place where kindness and integrity and courage matter. Yeah. Vermont is a place where the daughter of an immigrant dad and a working class mom can be the first woman and the first gay person to represent Vermont in the US House of Representatives. So there are so, so many brave women leaders who gave me the courage and the hope over my lifetime to do this. And those strong women who have come before me have helped me to feel like I could possibly have a life in politics. And you know some of their names, they're incredible women like Shirley Chisholm and Ann Richards and Bella Abzug and Geraldine Ferraro and someone you may not have heard of, but whose name I need to bring into the room tonight. Her name was Elaine Noble. She was the first openly gay person to run for a legislature in the United States. It was 1975, it was Massachusetts State House. She experienced so much hatred and discrimination. And when I learned of her race and her victory, there was this little part of me that thought maybe, maybe, maybe someday. She's still alive and I just want us to remember that it's people like Elaine Noble who did this at a time when it was incredibly dangerous to do so that enabled me to run today. And another, another hero of mine is Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, who I know many of you know. She was the first black woman elected to the Texas Senate and the first black woman who was elected from the South to represent uh, in the US House of Representatives. She said this of our nation, we are a people in a quandary about the present. We are a people in search of our future. We are a people in search of a national community. That is still true now. We are a people in search of a national community. I've been all over the state during this campaign. Everywhere I go, every town, every meet and greet, somebody will say to me, Becca, I don't want to hate my neighbors. I don't want to fear my neighbors. 
I want to live in a community where we can talk to each other again. So if you feel this way in this crowd, you're not the only one feeling that way. Thousands of Vermonters are feeling that way, and I know thousands of people across the country are feeling this way. We cannot continue to demonize each other. We have to stop and really see each other, see how much we share, even when we disagree, even when we hear hateful words. Every parent, regardless of their political party, worries about their kids' futures. Every working family right now is anxious and uncertain about how they're gonna make ends meet. We're all afraid for the planet, all of us. We're afraid for the freedoms that we hold dear. And those fears are justified. And I know Congressman Welch spoke to this earlier. Oh, Senator-elect, <laughs> Senator-elect. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as, as Senator-elect Welch said earlier, we know what's at stake. And it's not just the next two years. This is gonna take a long time to right this ship. We gotta dig deep. We gotta find our courage. We have to find our strength. We have to lift each other up. Because even if we get good news in the midterms, the work is not over. We have a democracy to save. So, so yes, yes, this is a time for great courage. It's a time for leaders who are courageous enough to say that our politics do not work for regular people. This is a time for leaders to fight as hard for other people's right to vote as they fight for their reelection. This is a time for us to end the politics that fuel corporate greed. This is a time for us to rebuild the middle class and bring us together. This is a time to say that affordable health care and stable housing for all will make us a stronger nation, not a weaker one. But, but most of all, my challenge, your challenge, the challenge of all of us is to have the everyday courage that will knit us back together as a nation. We have to listen truly to each other even when we disagree. Not so that we can just argue, but so we can truly understand where somebody is coming from. Let's have the courage to listen with compassion but to also speak with conviction. Let's have also the courage to know what's non-negotiable. And let's have the courage to know when we're actually wrong and we need to change our view. That takes real courage. So a lot of Vermonters ask me why I still have hope. Why am I running for Congress at this time? I feel so dark. Why do I see the light despite all the obstacles? I'm hopeful because of people who came before me, like Shirley Chisholm and Bella Abzug. I'm hopeful because of Ann Richards and Geraldine Ferraro and Barbara Jordan and Elaine Noble. I'm hopeful because those courageous leaders made it possible for me to be here tonight. Oh, yeah. And honestly, I'm hopeful because I never thought I'd be standing here. Really, it was a pipe dream. I didn't know anyone in politics. My parents didn't know anyone in politics. It seemed like such a strange notion to think I could run for office someday. But we did it. We did it because of thousands and thousands of Vermonters who stood with us, gave us five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, made thousands and thousands of calls. I think we made 535,000 calls. <laughs> and
And we, we knocked on thousands of doors and we believed that we could reject cynicism and believe in each other and believe in a grassroots movement that could be fierce and joyful. I ran for the Wyndham County Senate seat for the first time because I refused to accept that the richest nation in the world, that the richest nation in the world could not take care of working families, could not house them, could not feed them, could not give them health care. I had kids in my own classroom who I know were, were living in tents or in cars, whose parents were struggling with addiction. I still believe that we have to turn towards each other in our communities. That's how, that's how we're gonna find our way through for each other and for our communities. When we started out in this race, we were down in the polls. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of endorsements, but we never stopped believing that if we pulled people together and ran an authentic, genuine race where people could see what I was about, that they would come to us because they wanted something different. This campaign has proved that incredible power of connection. We are craving it. We're a nation that is fraught with loneliness and disconnection. This campaign renewed my hope in the power and the spirit that comes from truly seeing one another and listening deeply and being joyful together. I know that Vermonters believe that politics can be different. That's why we won. That's why we won. I give you, give you my word tonight that I will not back down from hard fights in Washington. I will carry your hopes and your wishes and your stories with me. I will stay rooted in our communities here in Vermont and I will work for our most vulnerable neighbors every single day. Thank you. And I will do this. I will be able to do this because I know you will be standing with me. This past month has been incredible. People stopping me at the store, at the bank, at the post office saying, we're with you. You're going down. You're doing this hard thing. Thank goodness you want to do it because I don't want to do it. I heard that more and more and more. Or what's wrong with you? Or you're too tiny to do it. All the things. I heard all the things. But I will be able to do it because of the belief you've had in this campaign. You believe in this movement because we're fighting for climate action. We're fighting for universal health care. We're fighting for livable wages, for reproductive rights, for the safety of our trans and queer neighbors for racial equity, for common sense gun laws, for families across the state who want a better life for their kids and grandkids, for a nation finally as good as its promise. So, so please, please have courage, stand firm, be compassionate, find hope and nurture it. We need this of each other. Our nation depends on this. Our future depends on this. We must give each other the courage to do all of this important work together. Thank you. Yeah.